to Jank Brews. It's been a couple of weeks. I went to Latin America to do some exploring. Today we're going to be talking about a really janky brew called Four Color Calamity. Based on the namesake card, Invoke Calamity. It's an instant for four red and a colorless. You may cast up to two instant and or sorcery spells with a total mana value of six or less from your graveyard and or hand without paying their mana costs if those spells we put into your graveyard. Exile and instead in Exile Invoke Calamity. So we're not going to go too deep on the depth tech here, uh, just looking at the combinations of cards and why we're playing them. Uh, we'll start with Zergo and Ojutai, because there's only one creature in this deck. In fact, there's only one card that is not an instant or sorcery, and it's Zergo and Ojutai. Uh, and it's basically because this deck uh, used to be Grixis in standards past. Uh, I loved playing this deck when Invoke Despair was in standard. Uh, it was clearly the path to victory. You no longer have, uh, and it's hard to win without something like Invoke Calamity. I'm sorry, without Invoke Despair. So here we are playing Zergo and Ojatai as a one of creature. Pretty resilient uh, to most removal. Bad against, uh, you know, Shouldred's Edict or Verdict, whatever the, you know, make you sacrifice uh, at instant speed. But other than that, Zergo and Ojatai is pretty tough to deal with. So we're playing that as a one of creature. Um, and what we want to do with Invoke Despair is have stuff in our graveyard that either kills our opponent or kills our opponent's board. Uh, and in combination that adds up to six CMC. So in this version, we're only playing three uh, other five mana spells and they're all burned down the house. So we wanna be burning down the house plus any number of these one mana spells, play with fire to rest, cut down, consider. Whatever we happen to need at the time, we wanna dump things into our graveyard uh, and then recast them with Invoke Calamity. Um, at the four spot, we've got big score because as you can imagine, our mana is bad here. We're playing four colors without green. So being able to get treasure tokens is pretty helpful. Uh, and we'll see in a minute how you can potentially get a lot of treasure tokens. We're playing a single copy of the end and we can cast the end from our hand. Then we can recast the end off of Invoke Calamity. This is good for things like uh, Traxa or Shieldreds, anything that really like messes up our game plan. Um, at the three spot, we're playing two copies of Confounding Riddle. Uh, this is a card that if we weren't on four colors, I think would have more copies. It's a viable counter spell. Um, even late in the game, um, you know, Having to pay four is pretty tough to get around in most cases. Uh, it also serves our purpose of dumping cards into the graveyard for Invoke Calamity. So if we don't have to counter anything or playing Control Mirrors or something of that nature, we can uh, end of turn Confounding Riddle to look for a land, for example, or look for our Invoke Calamity or look for our Zergo and Ojitai and dump everything else into the bin. We got a single copy of Brotherhood's End, along with Burn Down the House, helps us keep the board clean. We've got four full copies of Maestro's Charm. This was the card that made the original deck work. Um, it's great as a removal spell. It's great to push through damage. It is great at doing uh, what Invoke Calamity wants to do, which is fill up the yard and or find Invoke Calamity. So between Confounding Riddle and Maestro's Charm, typically the two cards that we don't want to have to dump into our graveyard are Invoke Calamity and Zergo and Ojitai. Zergo and Ojitai, you can't get back in this version of the deck, so you'd never want to dump it unless you absolutely have to. Uh, Invoke Calamity can hit another Invoke Calamity, um, which is every great once in a while relevant if you've got, say, like multiple one-drop uh, spells in your graveyard. You could invoke Calamity to uh, replay and invoke Calamity from the graveyard, play one of those one-mana spells, and then with a second invoke Calamity play, burn down the house and another one of those one-mana spells, or you know, a, a four and a two or a three and a three combo or something like that. So uh, beyond three, we've got quite a bit at two. Um, we're, we're going reasonably heavy into Lightning Helix. I think this should be a four of and a Jeskai version, which I have been working on, uh, but really just love Maestro's Charm and some of the block removal spells like the end is pretty cool. Um, so we got three copies of Lightning Helix. We got two copies of Galvanic Iteration. This was the card that really just pushed Invoke Despair over the top. If you can double up of Invoke Despair and and potentially, you know, cast some one mana spells off of Invoke Calamity at the same time, absolutely bonkers. Uh, but sometimes, you know, making multiple copies of Invoke Calamity, even with this shell, is fine. Making multiple copies of Burn Down the House is sometimes really nice. So we got a pair of these. These can also be dumped and played for flashback. Go for the Throat, Negate, Sunset Revelry, and Destroy Evil. Um, all somewhat self-explanatory. I'm not going to go into the mana. We're actually playing 61 cards in this deck. Uh, if there was a type of deck where 61 is right, I think that this is kind of it uh, because you're not trying to do any particular one thing. You're you're trying to have a bunch of potential combinations and the mana's bad. Uh, I want to say we're on 27 lands out of 61. I'm sorry, we're on 28 lands out of the 61. Uh, we're only playing a single mountain. The rest are duels. Uh, I'm not going to go into that 
If you want to dig on the mana, you're welcome to. Could be wrong, but anyway, this is a pretty fun and janky deck. We're going to get into some action. <laughs> 